What if you and I could regrow our lost hearing like birds? Well, cutting-edge research from Stanford University may hold the secret to reversing hearing loss and alleviating tinnitus. I'm Dr. Ben, joined by Dr. Suzanne. We're both audiologists and tinnitus specialists at Treble Health. Welcome to Sound Science, where we uncover the latest advancements in hearing research. Today, we're going to explore how birds have a natural ability to regenerate the hearing cells and how by studying this specifically, this could pave the way for therapies targeting hearing loss and tinnitus treatment. An excerpt from the Stanford article says, quote, millions of people exposed to loud noises at concerts, work, or in the general environment may know intellectually that loud noises are harmful, but they often don't fully realize that once the sensory cells in our inner ears are damaged and die, they never regenerate. When hearing goes, it's gone for good. Like humans, birds can regenerate their hair cells in their inner ear, restoring their hearing after an injury. This is very similar to other animals, such as salamanders that can regrow their limbs or zebrafishes that can repair spinal cord injuries. And the scientists at Stanford have been studying this phenomenon to try to uncover how it works. What they discovered was that when a bird loses its hearing, the supporting cells in the cochlea begin dividing and regenerating, eventually forming new hair cells capable of detecting sound again. This happens with two signal processes. One is called WNT and one is called NOTCH. WNT signaling regulates cell fate during development and tissue repair. And in birds, the WNT signaling is activated when cochlear hair cells are damaged, and it helps stimulate supporting cells to change them into new hair cells. Notch signaling also occurs and controls the balance between the supporting cells' increase in numbers and turning them into hair cells. When notch pathways are suppressed, they allow more supporting cells to become hair cells. So why can't humans do this? Well, simply, humans don't have the right genes to create this process. So some of the studies that are being done are trying to manipulate these pathways to lead to hair cell regeneration, but they've had limited success so far. The hypothesis behind all of this is the researchers believe that reactivating dormant pathways in human cochlear cells can mimic regenerative processes seen in birds. And from Stanford's Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine, there's a quote that they say, the goal is to reawaken these cells in humans, allowing for hair cell regeneration and the reverse of hearing loss. And this has big implications for us as audiologists specializing in tinnitus and for those who have hearing loss or tinnitus with a hearing loss. These are generally permanent conditions that while tinnitus can get better with treatment over time, hearing loss can also get better with the use of hearing aids or cochlear implants, but we're not actually repairing the cells in the cochlea. So this would be novel and unique to pull this off. One thing I found in the study quite interesting, it said, by studying birds, which unlike mammals can naturally regenerate lost sensory cells in the inner ear, the researchers have identified an essential trigger that controls hair cell regeneration in the cochlea. So it's almost as if we're learning about our biology in a more refined, specific way, and that could lead to better treatments and potentially, you know, cures for hearing loss. And so how does this connect to tinnitus? Well, we know that hair cells in the cochlea play a critical role in detecting sound and transmitting it to the brain. We also know that damage to these cells can cause hearing loss and tinnitus as the brain tries to compensate for the lack of auditory input by creating phantom sounds. The potential benefits for regeneration would be that by restoring these hair cells, you could possibly reduce or maybe even eliminate tinnitus by addressing its root cause of cochlear damage. Reestablishing these proper inputs to the auditory system might normalize neural activity and decrease tinnitus perception. Dr. Suzanne, how do you think patients with tinnitus and hearing loss could benefit from therapies based on this research in the future? I think it's really exciting that there's a possibility of not only being able to um, have our hearing ability restored, but also this reduction in tinnitus for many people that have hearing loss. Do you find that most of your patients have hearing loss? What are you generally seeing regarding patients with a primary issue of tinnitus and how much of that could be related to their hearing loss? 
The single most cause of tinnitus is from hearing loss. So a lot of my patients have hearing loss. That's what we see a lot of at Trouble Health. And if your patients today are asking you, hey, should I wait to do treatment for these hairs, for this hair cell regeneration? Or, you know, how can I get involved in this research? Uh, what do you typically advise them? So I would say this research is still kind of in its infant stages. They are still looking at animal models. So I would say continue doing the things that we know that work, you know, sound therapy, hearing devices, cognitive behavioral techniques. Those are tried and true methods that have been working for years and that we do here at Trouble Health. So I would say don't don't wait off on doing any treatment for this because it's still in its um, infancy stages. And for treating the hearing loss, uh, research has shown that there's cognitive benefits for a healthy brain to actually treat hearing loss uh, with properly fit hearing aids that are adjusted to your hearing loss uh, that can keep your brain healthy, engaged, it can keep you active, socially connected. And uh, there has been research that's shown that treating hearing loss is actually something you can do to prevent or reduce the risk of uh, negative cognitive decline or dementia. So uh, that's really exciting. It shows that hearing is so connected to our brain and overall brain health. Very exciting. They've had some current progress in the research, being that the scientists have identified the key genes and proteins involved in the hair cell regeneration in birds. And they have seen that rather than the hair cell itself regenerating, it is these supporting cells that are being triggered by these biochemical reactions that are then um, being transferred into a hair cell. So that was a huge breakthrough. And they've also done some early trials in mice showing very promising results with some regeneration of damaged hair cells. And I found this very interesting. The article said, signals from dying sensory cochlear cells prompted changes not in the stem cells, but in cells that surround and support the stem cells. And changes in cell surface receptors on the support cells lead to changes in those cells' activity. The team carefully documented a series of bio chemical changes in the support cells that ultimately led to activation of regenerative stem cells. So this is very advanced microbiology. I'm really impressed that, uh, you know, even in our study of understanding the ear, the inner ear, the small little hair cells, they're going, they're zooming in, you know, 10x, maybe even more on the very small pieces around those cells. So I love to see it. The scientists have some challenges up ahead. Human cochlear cells lack this regenerative capacity that the birds have. So they're trying to overcome some barriers, such as safely reactivating human cells without causing unintended side effects. There was a great quote from the research article that said, we're not there yet, but understanding how birds regenerate hearing gives us a roadmap to develop similar therapies for humans. If these therapies are to become available, who would they benefit? And is that you? So if you have noise-induced hearing loss, age-related hearing loss, or tinnitus caused by damage to your cochlea, essentially if you've had a hearing test and it showed that any of the cells in your cochlea were damaged or you know declined, then this could potentially benefit you because that's exactly what we're doing here. We're trying to restore the function of the cochlea by looking at those cells. Individuals who have been told that their hearing loss is, quote, irreversible or permanent, which should be everyone, those would be people who should raise their eyebrows and say, hmm, if there was a new therapy that could potentially work for me, that could improve my hearing as well as potentially my tinnitus. And that's what I would expect because we know that even today when we treat hearing loss with hearing aids, when the patient is using hearing aids, they will often say, oh, wow, that really helps my tinnitus a lot. Just using hearing aids and having more sound, it makes the phantom sound of my tinnitus much less. In some cases, patients don't even hear their tinnitus when they're using hearing aids, especially in milder cases of tinnitus. So uh, this would be certainly applicable to those individuals. Future applications, we also wanted to highlight how therapies could include gene editing, stem cell therapy, or potential drugs that stimulate different pathways. Hearing restoration may reduce the need for some types of hearing aids or even sound therapy devices potentially, because if we're treating hearing loss or some types of tinnitus at the root cause level, then the therapy may not even be necessary. We don't see that coming anytime soon. And I personally would celebrate that, you know, if tinnitus and hearing loss was, you know, cured, well, that would be great because we have a lot of experience with patients who are really struggling and sometimes suffering with these conditions. So we know this would make a huge impact. If this research became a clinical reality, how would it change the way we treat tinnitus? We would 
probably be having the patient go through thorough evaluation to see if they would qualify for uh, potentially getting to the root cause of hearing loss and, and trying to restore the hearing medically. Just in case anyone's wondering, this isn't available right now. You can't sign up for a clinical trial. So, you know, you're not missing anything. Don't have don't have this fear that, you know, this is out there and you're not getting it. It's really not out there. It's not close to being ready clinically. So just wanted to highlight that. Well, what's the takeaway message from our talk? Birds have shown us what's possible, that regenerating hearing is no longer science fiction. While it's early days, this research offers hope for a future where tinnitus and hearing loss could be reversed. So for you, I'd like for you to do one of two things. One, identify, do you have tinnitus that may be caused by hearing loss or do you have hearing loss? And then number two, even though these therapies aren't available now, what can you do this year, 2025, let's say, to have better hearing health with your tinnitus or your hearing? For more updates here on our sound science uh, episodes, Dr. Suzanne May and I are happy to present them to you. And you can also reach out to Treble Health and our team if you have tinnitus or hearing loss and want some expert guidance. We offer a free telehealth consultation. You can see the link right now on the screen where you can book a call with a doctor on our team and go into more details based on your hearing test, what your symptoms are, and presents.